Kennedy gave this dramatic speech in 1961 that he called his second State of the Union. And Kennedy was trying to reclaim momentum, both for his presidency and in the Cold War. Announcing that we were going to the moon was a way of reclaiming that momentum. The interesting thing is that until just 24 hours before he gave that second State of the Union address, he was simply going to deliver the entire speech to Congress as a sheaf of pages, as, as, as a paper document. He wasn't going to deliver it in person. And I think it's very clear that part of what gave the race to the moon such urgency and immediacy and what rallied Americans to that idea was him delivering the speech in person to both houses of Congress that day. So this classic image from the moon landing, maybe the image that most Americans associate with us going to the moon, is an astronaut standing, saluting the flag or standing by the flag, the flag hung out. The remarkable thing is that NASA had done no thinking about what to do once they got to the moon in terms of a celebration. And NASA very hurriedly formed the Committee on Symbolic Activities for the First Moon Landing. And that's where the idea for the plaque and the flag came from. Jack Kinsler and his staff in the Technical Services Department went and developed this flag that has a kind of curtain rod that pivots out along the top so the flag can be drawn out like a curtain. And that's why the flag, so to speak, flies on the moon. And that all had to be done in literally the last eight, 10 weeks before the moon landing. And that's why, in fact, the flag rode outside the spaceship. They didn't have time to get approval to put a new piece of equipment inside the spaceship. Today, we have this sense that by the time Americans started landing on the moon, the quote unquote race to the moon was somehow over. But in fact, right at the very last minute, the Soviets launched their own unmanned robotic probe on Sunday. Apollo 11 launched on Wednesday. So it was actually launched three days before Apollo 11. In the end, that probe crash landed on the moon. It hit a mountain that the Soviets did not know was there going 300 miles an hour. One of the most remarkable leaps that NASA and Apollo made was in computer technology. The spaceships couldn't get to the moon without advanced high-speed computing, but actually the kind of computers did not exist when we flew to the moon in the 1960s. And NASA and MIT did all that. They created what was then the fastest, smallest, most nimble computer in the world. And it could do this incredibly complicated math to put a spaceship on the surface of the moon instantaneously. The really remarkable thing about those computers is that they had less computing power than your microwave oven does today. In the early 60s, NASA was very interested in sending a vehicle to the moon with the moon landers, but the ambitions kind of outstripped themselves and what NASA created and actually built and prototyped and tested on Earth was something the size of a Honda minivan. But the design team at General Motors had been working on those early lunar landers, and they were passionately devoted to the idea. So even after NASA canceled it, General Motors' design team kept working on this idea of a car, and they came up with what ended up being the vehicle that was taken, a, a prototype of it, and they built a tiny little model the size of a toy car. And as part of their pitch to get NASA to reconsider the car, they flew to Huntsville, Alabama, and they visited Werner von Braun, the great rocket genius. And they hid outside his office in the hall, and they drew the radio-controlled lunar rover into Werner von Braun's office with the astronaut, uh, G.I. Joe, sitting at the controls. And he was on the phone, he hung up, he said, what's this? And the GM engineers walked into his office and pitched him for 30 minutes on the importance of sending a car to the moon. And when they were done, he literally slammed his hand on his desk and said, we must do it. And they figured out how to get it on an already almost overloaded lunar module. And that lunar rover changed the experience of being on the moon for those last three moon landings. In the first 15 minutes of the first lunar rover, the astronauts went farther than all the previous astronauts had been able to go on foot.